Welcome to the cinematic world of 1941, a 1979 film that, despite its initial mixed reception, has stood the test of time as a unique entry in the industry's history. Directed by Steven Spielberg and set against the backdrop of World War II hysteria on the West Coast, this comedic spectacle showcases the chaos that ensues when an imagined Japanese invasion collides with the eccentricities of American society. What enduring qualities do you think make this movie an everlasting symbol of the industry? Could it be the stellar ensemble cast, including John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, and Christopher Lee, who brought a diverse array of characters to life? Or perhaps it's Spielberg's masterful blend of slapstick humor and thrilling action that keeps audiences coming back for more. Out of the many roles in this movie, which one was your favorite? Was it the zany antics of Captain Wild Bill Kelso, played by John Belushi, or the earnest efforts of Ward Douglas, portrayed by Dan Aykroyd? With a cast as dynamic as the events unfolding on screen, choosing a favorite character becomes a delightful challenge. As we dive into the world of 1941, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film. Whether it's a hilarious scene that left you in stitches or a nostalgic moment tied to the era, we would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's set the stage for some random facts about the show. Did you know that 1941 marked Spielberg's first collaboration with acclaimed composer John Williams? The film's score, filled with whimsical melodies and patriotic undertones, adds another layer to the viewing experience. And here's a tidbit for trivia enthusiasts. The movie's production design earned an Academy Award nomination, highlighting the meticulous attention to detail in recreating the wartime atmosphere. So, what's your favorite trivia about 1941? Share your thoughts and join the conversation about this timeless cinematic gem. In 1979, Steven Spielberg faced both anticipation and skepticism with his film 1941. Before its release, Spielberg found himself in a candid conversation with critic Paul and Kale on a radio program. Kale, having warned Spielberg about the high expectations following the success of Jaws and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, surprisingly turned out to be one of the few critics to praise 1941 when it hit theaters. Interestingly, Spielberg, in a moment of humor during the production, contemplated turning 1941 into a musical. He later quipped that, in hindsight, such a move might have been beneficial. Notably, Ivan Reitman was initially approached to direct the film but declined due to his commitment to shooting meatballs concurrently. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes shed light on the dynamic circumstances surrounding the making and reception of 1941. Despite its mixed critical reviews, the film stands as a distinctive chapter in Spielberg's career, marked by unexpected turns and diverse reactions. In a revealing 1990 interview with British film critic Barry Norman, Steven Spielberg candidly reflected on the reception of his film 1941. The lukewarm response to the movie stood as one of the most significant lessons in his career. Spielberg acknowledged the impact of personal arrogance that had crept in after the success of Jaws and Close Encounters of the Third Kind. He expressed regret for relinquishing control over crucial aspects, such as action and miniature sequences, to second unit directors and model units a departure from his approach in Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. According to Spielberg, this movie's reception taught him valuable lessons about humility and creative control. It became clear that the runaway successes of his earlier films had immunized him from missteps. In the interview, Spielberg also admitted that Stanley Kubrick, a notable figure in the industry, had conveyed a mixed review, deeming the film great, but not funny, as shared by Jack Nicholson. This admission by Spielberg sheds light on the dynamic circumstances surrounding the making and reception of 1941. The film's production was marked by unexpected turns and diverse reactions. The revelation of behind-the-scenes challenges and insights into Spielberg's self-reflection provide a fascinating perspective on the movie's place in his career. To bring a touch of humor to the movie 1941, a deleted scene featured Holly's P. Wood facing a menacing torture device, revealed later to be a harmless coat hanger. Spielberg, disappointed by losing the joke, vowed to incorporate it in all his future films until it stuck. Fortunately, it found a place in his subsequent work, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. 
In addition to its comedic elements, the film boasts a standout musical component. Steven Spielberg himself has praised the march composed by John Williams for 1941 as his personal favorite among all the marches he has created. Moreover, the visual spectacle of explosions in the movie was achieved with a staggering number of flashbulbs. Add, Flowers estimated the use of between 50,000 and 75,000 flashbulbs to create the vivid flashes of explosions in the distant background. These behind-the-scenes details offer a glimpse into the intricate and multifaceted production of 1941. The inclusion of a recurring joke, the director's favorite musical piece, and the extensive use of practical effects highlight the various dimensions that contributed to the film's unique character. His insights into the making of 1941 provide a deeper understanding of Spielberg's creative process and the intricate details that shape this particular cinematic endeavor, showcasing the director's commitment to both humor and technical excellence in his work. In the chaotic production of the 1979 movie 1941, an incident involving the extras cast as the Japanese submarine crew added a dose of unexpected tension. Hired solely based on their Asian ethnicity, these laid-back Southern Californians, lacking any acting training, provoked the ire of Tashir Mifune, an actual Japanese World War II veteran. Outraged by their attitudes, Mifune took it upon himself to instill discipline. He yelled at them to get in line, slapped one of them, declaring, This is how Japanese men are trained. From that point on, Mifune worked closely with them. Amidst the filming chaos, noise became a hindrance to communication. Some scenes were so deafening that Steven Spielberg, the director, found himself resorting to unconventional methods. Unable to make himself heard by yelling cut, Spielberg had to resort to firing a prop machine gun in the air to bring the action to a halt. Adding an interesting layer to the film, the characters Willie and Joe, portrayed by David L. Lander and Michael McKean, respectively, carry a subtle nod to Bill Malden, a World War II veteran and cartoonist. Malden's creations for the Army newspaper, Stars and Stripes, represented the average American G.I. S. and their daily lives outside of combat. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes shed light on the intricate and tumultuous production of 1941. From cultural clashes among extras to the need for unconventional methods to control the set, the movie's creation was far from conventional. These incidents, both amusing and tense, provide a unique perspective on the challenges faced during the making of Spielberg's film. As we bid adieu to the cinematic journey through the chaotic escapades of 1941, take a moment to let the echoes of the 1979 masterpiece resonate within the corridors of your memory. Spielberg's kaleidoscopic canvas painted with humor, chaos, and the spirit of an era gone by invites you to introspect. Did the comedic symphony of wartime antics strike a chord with your own tales of nostalgia? Perhaps the clatter of vintage machinery and the laughter that reverberates in the aftermath of mishaps transport you to your own personal chronicles. As the curtain falls on this cinematic odyssey, we invite you to share the snippets of your thoughts, the flickers of your laughter, and the shadows of your memories that 1941 has illuminated. Did the film become a time capsule, unlocking forgotten anecdotes, or did it carve a place in your heart as a timeless classic? Unearth those moments and let them mingle with the celluloid magic that is 1941. Your reflections are the colors that paint the broader canvas of the film's legacy, and your narratives are the scripts that enrich its storyline. So, whether you're a seasoned aficionado or a newcomer touched by the whimsy of 1941, share your musings, anecdotes, or simply your favorite scenes. Let the dialogue extend beyond the silver screen and resonate within the shared experiences of fellow enthusiasts. Thank you for joining us on this whimsical voyage through time and laughter. Your presence, like a well-executed punchline, adds the perfect touch to the narrative. Until our cinematic paths cross again, keep the reels of your memories rolling.